this episode, I'm going to share with you some quick tips for the math section. Some of them are strategies that really only take a few seconds to describe, and others are things you should just keep in mind or know about how the SAT math works. Let's have a look. We're going to talk about how you should read carefully, use your calculator wisely, use all the information given, not worry about formulas or about symbols, and know how to tackle always, never, and must problems, as well as could and can problems. Let's go into details now. So first of all, it is so important to read carefully on the math section. I'm not saying that this is a strategy for rocket scientists, but I do want you to keep in mind that so many points are lost by students reading the question wrong or not answering the right question. So keep in mind any restrictions. If you're told that you're dealing with a prime number, make sure you're dealing with a prime number. Or if A, B, and C have to be distinct integers, don't make them the same as each other. Just basically pay attention to what you're being told to do. And of course, answer the question being asked. So if you've solved for X, make sure that you're supposed to turn in your answer for X rather than say Y. Next up, use your calculator wisely. Calculators are allowed on the SAT. Basically, as long as you don't have a calculator with a QWERTY keyboard that beeps and prints out tape, which I think would be pretty hard to find, you'll be fine. That said, you want to know that SAT problems are designed so you can solve them without calculators. So what that means is, if you are using your calculator and you find yourself doing some really nutso, elaborate calculations, you might want to stop and think, am I doing something wrong? or did I miss a shortcut? You might be doing a brute force approach to a math problem that could really be solved more easily by just stepping back and reading and thinking. Also, you definitely want to use all the information given. Um, if you solved a problem without using all the information given to you, there's something wrong. I kind of think of it like a toaster. If you take a toaster apart and you put it back together and you have a piece left over, there's a problem. Definitely think of math problems the same way. If you have a piece left over you didn't use, um, you have a faulty toaster slash math problem. And it's so rare that a SAT problem can be solved without using all the information given that you should really question yourself if you think you pulled it off. That's going to be maybe less than once per test that you can get away with that, so be suspicious. Now, don't worry about formulas. The SAT is there to test your logic, your math skills generally, but it's not there to test your knowledge of formulas. So for instance, here are two formulas that might look familiar. I hope they do. And it might be the case that you could use them, but it will never be the case that you have to use them. And the formulas that are used on the SAT are pretty straightforward, and they'll be given to you at the front of the section. So for instance, Pythagorean theorem, you probably know, but it's also given to you. Area of a circle, you probably know, but it's also given to you. That will be at the very start of every math section. That said, even though the formulas are given to you, you might want to consider studying them anyway. That way you can move faster through the test and spend time problem solving instead of trying to remember or look up formulas from the front of the test. Another thing besides formulas you don't have to worry about is symbols. A lot of people see things like this and they freak out. So you might see on the SAT something that looks like, let A, let's call it box, let A box B be defined as blah, blah, blah. Very simple. You just need to know that if you see an un...